Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Who in the Torah YouTube channel. And we are doing the Torah. It is a little early, so everyone's looking a little tired around here, but we are doing the Torah series. We are going over the Torah, we are finding the commands, and uh, that's what we're told to do, and that's what we're going to do. Speak for yourself, Rip, Rip Van Winkle. I, I'm feeling just fine. Anyone else tired? No. No? Kid, kid's the only one tired here. Ah, oh, we're all a little, uh, oh, a little. Dude, we like can't. over here, everyone's giving me like the zombie fires <laughs> staring out. Like. It's a little early around here, but we are doing what we should be doing. And today, can we get a drum roll? It's a preparation day. No, it's not. No, it's what? tomorrow. Oh crap! It's not. I was off a day. It isn't a preparation. I was wondering day. why we were doing a drum roll. Hey, hey, undo the drum roll. We got it. <laughs> anyway, Today's bath here, day. Back, back. Take your drum roll back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's it's bath day. Oh, it's not so exciting. I really thought today was a sh uh, sixth of day. <laughs> oh, how depressing. I don't yeah. know why I thought that. But I guess we'll go with that. It's not a sh preparation day, but tomorrow is. So if everybody wants to make sure you're ready tomorrow to prepare for a Shabbat, that would be great. I think because somebody said yesterday was a fifth day. That might be why. I don't know. Man, this is totally a bummer. I, I have a whole bath day of dogs, and that's a terrible, terrible thing. All right. Well, I guess that's less exciting. So, all right. How are you guys? Good. Everyone good? Yeah. All right, so it's not a preparation day. I guess we are a little sleep, or maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe we should have started over. All right, yeah, all right. Let's keep going. Um, where do we have? We have anything from yesterday? Um, you, we we saw everybody's stuff. El, Emissary Elohim commented on some stuff, and um, it's definitely. I, I think Carla's right on some stuff that you're not going to have a spiritual protection unless. You're keeping the you're you're in covenant with Yah, and if you if you're in covenant with Yah, I do believe that you have the power to call down legions of angels if so you need, and hopefully that our Creator would de de deliver them to you if that is the case. All right, so the last three chapters that we went over in Numbers, um, we had Balaam and Balak. Um, a quick recap of that, Eli. Oh, uh, so Balak, he's the king of Moab, and he saw. Uh, Yisrael, they were like around Moab and they were like enormous so he calls Bilaam to come and curse them because Bilaam is like a sorcerer and so Bilaam says no but because Yahuwah has told him no but then uh, he then he asks Yahuwah again Yahuwah says to go with them only if they ask you to and then he, then he went with them, but then an angel went in the way and stopped him, and his, then he beat his donkey, and the, the donkey started talking to him, and they saw the angel, and the angel told him to go, and then he has like seven altars, and they sacrificed a bunch of things, and they start, the, then Yahuwah told him to bless Israel, and this happened three times. All right, so I guess this is a good time to discuss what is sorcery. Let's talk about this real quick. What is sorcery? Let's go. What do, what do we know uh, of I as sorcery? I see it as using um, like demonic uh, power, like dark, dark like devils to do what you need to get done, like curse people, make people's lives terrible, make your lives better, something of that sort. Yeah. So there's definitely like some kind of unclean spirits with sorcery. Um, I would have to venture and say that TV, if you're watching television programming, I would say that's sorcery, because number one, you're 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 seeing stuff that you probably shouldn't be seeing. Number one. And it's all about programming. That's why they call it television programming. And inside of that, um, I guess a lot of people out there probably have zero idea. And I'm not going to go too far down the rabbit hole. But inside of sorcery, inside of wizardry and things like this, there's a thing called numerology. And it's not the good numerology. It's the bad numerology. And <clears throat> for those who actually watch television programming, and there, there is a lie inside of television and the programming you don't want to be programmed, but they're always flashing the number 33, and they love 33. They'll, you'll see that everywhere. You'll see um, news events, everything that goes down. They'll have an ambulance that says 33, or they have the cops that it says 33 on it, or 33 people will die, um, or they'll go 66 people will die. And there's a couple of reasons for that, and one of them is if you watch television programming, that means you are subjecting yourself to the sorcery to the wizardry. None of the, what you see on TV is not real. If it has made it to the mainstream news, they are pushing agendas and they're pushing things that aren't real to the rest of the world. And all you need to do is look outside your window and you can see that the rest of the world is not like they have on the tell live vision program. So when we come down to sorcery and things of that sort, let's go back into that. We know of modern day, we know, we know what 
people are like witches. We've, we've seen like uh, witches in their cauldrons, right? And, they, right? and everyone has that. That's a type of witchcraft and sorcery. Um, we, we talked about tell lie vision programming. What other kinds of sorcery is there? There's a medical, ph- there's medical sorcery. Medical sorcery. So, and that takes me back to the question I had the other day is if you have high blood pressure and you take high blood pressure pills by the wizards, which are big pharma, are we, are we subjecting ourselves to sorcery? Should we be injecting stuff into us? Probably not. I guess it goes for the same for, for men. A lot of men will inject testosterone, right? Because of a, the food that we have had in the world. And there's all these different um, dyes and different colors in the food. And it kills men's testosterone. They have none. So is shooting testosterone for men, is that sorcery? Well, it's not normal. It's not like natural testosterone because you're all depleted. Yeah, it's none, none, of, none of what you shoot up is like your body's testosterone. It's all synthetic. It's made in a lab. To make it in a lab, you're dealing with vials. You're dealing with alchemy. You're dealing with chemistry. You're dealing with all that kind of stuff. So the question is, is, is shooting testosterone, is shooting insulin, um, what about um, di- diabetics, right? You, when you're dealing with insulin, is this, is this sorcery? Where, where is the sorcery at? And where, how do we not do uh, you know, wizardry sorcery and this kind of stuff. What about, what about Tylenol for your headache? Uh, it's made by who? Who is it made by? Bayer. It's made by Bayer. And Bayer is uh, a very, very evil pharmaceutical company. And the, you know, they, the, all these people have been sued multiple times for their killing people over and over and over. So the question becomes, and I guess, I guess a question for everybody out there is, how far deep down the sorcery hole do we avoid going or do we not partake in anything? Do you take a medicine for your headache, or do we let the headache roll itself out? I know right here we we take we have Tylenol, we take it, we take headache meds, but these are some things that I'm just talking about. Is is all of these inventions that we have now aren't supposed to be? Noah had a book of roots and various herbs and things of that nature, and everything beyond that I believe is some sort of sorcery. So those guys in uh, white coats that are out there and then you have the guys in white coats that are giving you the drugs at the pharmacies. I mean, these are just the modern day wizards. They, they're modern day sorcerers and they may not be the ones who are actually concocting the, the chemistry and doing this, but they're, they're, if they have a hand in de- delivering it to the people and all of these, all of these drugs, like there is no such, there's no such big pharma drug that doesn't have an effect, right? Everyone says, oh, it's side effects. Well, no, it's an effect. Because whatever it's doing, if you have high blood pressure and you're taking pressure, you're taking the pills for it, the effect of that is you hope that your blood pressure goes down. But all the other effects are is that you could you could urinate blood, you can have rashes, you can have all this stuff. So where do we lean on Yah for everything versus using anything synthetic, which would be some sort of sorcery? Any anyone? Um I guess you have to ask for his help in healing you. And I guess, I don't know, I guess if it's life or death, I guess it depends on if it's like you're about to die, do you take this or not? Yeah, well, that's the question, life or death. Here, here, would, you guys, would, would you guys do it? I mean, that's the question. Life or uh, death, life or death, what is, what is your, and, and if we're not supposed to be dealing with divination and sorceries and, and enchantments and things of this nature, um, where, where is the stop? Where does the buck stop, as they say? Um, I would say something like, do you really want to inject this self? Is your life, well, who knows what's in this stuff? If you don't know what's in this stuff, you're injecting yourself with foreign objects. You don't know what this can do to you, what this can change inside of you. Like, do you really want to, ch- do you really want to take that risk of changing your own body from what your perfect creation was into whatever you could be? And when we are dealing with stuff like diabetes, most of the time, that is a lifestyle thing that we have done to ourselves. There are people with diabetes that, that basically have low blood sugar to begin with, and they have to have it. Um, they have to drink like you know, like like orange juice and things like that. I remember kids in school that had diabetes, and, and they start feeling like they're about to pass out, and the, you know, the teacher would go give them a cup of orange juice. Um, but there, you know, there that's one one form of diabetes. The other one is the kind of diabetes I have for being a glutton, which is a lifestyle um, f- snafu, right? It's something where I didn't take care of my temple, and people aren't taking care of the temple. So, do we do this stuff? 
do what do we do? What's the question? That's I'm asking you guys as a consortium here. Uh, I said, don't take it. You have to you have to change your life. You have to like really put an effort. It's not just the Babylonian way is jam yourself with insulin, and then you can eat whatever you want. I'm telling you, there's probably two hundred thousand or more kinds of drugs. Like in the big pharma world, there is a drug for everything. In fact, they have this uh, this desk reference thing called the PCR. It's uh, physicians. No, it's a PDR. Physicians desk reference, and it's about. Two and a half, you guys have seen it. Mm-hmm. We have a couple of them. And it's just huge and it's full of every kind of drug and every kind of illness there is. Nicole, what do you got? Seek natural. Seek what Yah has provided for us in the fields. Go find the natural healing herbs versus going with Big Pharma. So here's the world we live in right now. If you guys look at the logo of the farm of the of the medical industry, and we look at this and we look at Yaw's ways, the medical industry has a, a staff and they, that, that staff that they go up is actually called the Rod of Hermes. And they, that is what the staff is. And you have two snakes going up that. Now, in what world do we live in? Are we okay with a couple of snakes going up a pole and that's how we trust our life to, right? Does that seem like a deception? I mean, uh, does that seem like we should be... Do we trust the we snake? We shouldn't trust the serpent. We saw what happened to Adam and Eve when they trusted the serpent. So. Well, this is two serpents. That's even worse, right? So now we're, we're trusting two serpents. So that's the question. Is, are these guys sorcerers? Do they do they do this? Should we be t- touching any of the stuff that they produce? Well, uh, probably not. I mean, they don't worship Yahuwah, so they're not out for our best interests. No, they're out. Yeah, they're out for like trying to find an answer for a disease that, at the end of the day, more than likely they could have killed over and over and over. All right, I don't have any answers for that. I just thought it was some good thought-provoking talk. Um, let's get into our lesson and let's begin. All right, and drum roll, show. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we got there. And the second drum roll because I am off a day, and so this is how we're out in the jungle we are. I don't even know what day it is. Um, I should have though. All right, here we go. Number twenty-five. And Yashrael abode in Chittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Now, for those of you who read with kids, I'm not going to say what that sounds like, and I don't know if that actually says that, but we have taken that word and made it into something that it shouldn't be said, and so I don't want to say it. So we'll say Chittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Okay, whoa, we just ended up with, with Yah not willing to curse the Yashraelites because he said there was nothing against them right now, and then all of a sudden, the people of Yashrael, they went to the daughters of Moab. Okay. And they were strictly told not to do that. They, they were told, do not go, do not intermarry with the children of Moab. They were supposed to put these people under the ban. Okay, so this again will go to another question. Should we hang out with other people that are not Torah keepers? No. Why? Because one, if you hang out with them long enough, your habits are, their habits are going to rub off on you. It doesn't matter if, you're, if you know right from wrong, whatever, you're going to start talking like them, you're going to end up like them the more you hang out with them. Two, you could end up in a situation with them that is going to cost you your soul that you can't get out of because you were hanging out with that person because you consider that person a friend. Yeah, and number three is we just saw an incident right here where this is what happened, right? And it is the um, it is the beautiful women of the world that flutter their eyes and they're able to bring on the enchantments. Um, and here we go, right? Poor men are unable to uh, know right from wrong when they have the eyelids fluttering at you. Okay, and they called the people into the sacrifices of their Elohim, and the people did eat and bowed down to their Elohim. Ah, ah I'm hurt right here. Okay, right, this is bad. This is bad. I don't understand. They, they, they literally see everything Yah has done for them, and they do this. In the next chapter, right, he just saved them from being cursed from this guy, and the kings are after him, and now these people went, and it's the women. And it's not like they didn't have beautiful women amongst themselves, right? It's the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence until you realize the guy just came by in Roundup. He put Roundup on that grass, and you're sitting there eating poison grass. It's a problem. Three. And Yashrael joined himself into Baal Peor, and the anger of Yahuwah is kindled against Yashrael. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before Yahuwah against the sun, that the fierce anger of Yahuwah may be turned away from Yashrael. All right, does your guys just say take all the heads? They're all leaders. Okay, so the king says take all the heads of the people and hang them against, so are we dealing with, it says, uh, mm-hmm. in the NIV it says take all the leaders of these people. Anyone have anything different? Are we dealing with the heads or the bodies? 
The leaders. The, the leaders. leaders. The leaders' heads or no, the leaders? like the heads of the tribes. Uh, the heads of the tribes. All right. All right. So there we go. I was just thinking a little more graphic here. All right. And Moshe said unto the judges of Yashrael, slay ye every one his men that were joined into unto Baal Peor. So I remember your tribe, you go slaughter. Kill them all. And behold, one of the children of Yashrael came and brought unto his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moshe and in the sight of all the assembly of the children of Yashrael who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. All right, so let's envision this and set this up, right? So we have all of this horrible stuff coming up on and then some dude, some Joe Cool comes back with his new Midian wife and he's just like, hey, hey, look at me. And Moshe is sitting there stunned. They're standing at the temple, right? They're standing at the, the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And they're stunned. And they see this woman that should not be in the camp. And it's with Joe Cool. And what happens? And when Piniak, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the assembly and took a javelin in his hand. And that's a dog getting spanked. And he went after the man of Yashrael into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Yashrael and the woman through her belly, so the plague was stayed from the children of Yashrael. Now that is an awesome spear. That was an Sharp. awesome. That was a heck of an incident. Yeah, that would be. Can you imagine that? That was a shish kebabing of uh, two man, demons. Uh, two demons. Yeah, essentially two demons. People that turned their eyes and hearts away from Yah, and they got exactly what they deserved. And you know the Christians, the people outside of this, will always go, "Oh, your your God is a bloodthirsty maniac." He just wants to kill everybody. He's out there killing man, woman, children, donkeys, everything. This guy's crazy. But then you explain to them that these people, you know, these were the, the, the giant bloodline. This is the bloodline that is against us today. If you think this giant bloodline is gone, it is not gone. It never, it went away for a little bit and then it came back and it's still here in force. They may not be 40 foot giants, but there is evil DNA among us. All right. Um, so nine, and those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. So 24,000 again died That's here. That's a lot of people died. That's a lot of people. Yeah. What plague though? What exactly plague was it? And how bad was it? What kind of plague? Anyone guesses? Guesses? We had snakes before. Um, this one has to be like something like. Hor some horrible thing. They died probably horrible, evil death. Yeah. Maybe leprosy or something. Quick leprosy? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, don't, I think it's probably just death. It's in a out day. The camp. Yeah, what plague, though? What? what, what like a, just straight up death. I think it's just like death. People just start dropping them. Instead of plague, though, I'm sure Yah, Yah is very creative with his uh, ways. All right. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, Piniak, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Yashrael, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Yashrael in my jealousy. That's a that's a strange that's a strange thing, right? So this guy, not only was he um, he he had two pats on the back and he was propped up, this guy was the man for driving his spear into a guy into the the woman, right? He shish kebabed him, and Yah Yah says that is the reason that I spared them all from this plague. Wherefore say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him. Even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his Elohim and made an atonement for the children of Yashrael. Now the name of the Yashraeli that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianite woman, was Zimri, the son of Kalu, a prince of a chief house among the Shimonia. So this guy is, uh, he was a, they said he's a prince, right? So he was a leader of some kind. And this was the kid of the leader that did this and so that was probably a great example and the name of the Midianite Midianite woman that was slain was Cosby the daughter of Zur he was head over a people and a chief house in Midian so this is a uh, this was a big deal this was a uh, the daughter I mean again this wasn't just a female this was a daughter of somebody in leadership roles and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe say vex the Midianim and smite them for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. All right. Well, anyone have anything? Cage, you're um, still out cold, bro. You might need some more sleep this week. Good thing Shabbat's in two days. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, what do you got? there's a... Uh... 
they've been through this, right? They've been through the entire time. They've seen everything Yahoo has done for them. Even if they didn't know that Yah stopped a curse from them, why are they going off serving other Elohim? Why, why is it so hard to just do what he said, where he's like, don't go into these other camps, don't bat on other mighty ones, and yet they're still continuing doing it. I just don't understand how they can keep messing this up after everything they've seen and been through. Well, Scripture says sin is always crouching at your door. It's always waiting to see who it is able to get. And so... Well, it always um, gets the Israelites. For reason. It gets the Israelites. Well, it also gets everybody. It does it not. I mean, is there is there a, a time, is there a day you have made it through a day without sending cups? Probably not. Probably not. I don't think so. I don't think any of us have ever made it through the day like that. And so it is very easy to fall out of the grace of our creator, which is why we absolutely need to get in the grace of our creator. Eli, how do we get in the grace of our creator? By following his Torah. And following, and what else? What, how do, how do, what's, what's the signs of loyalty? How do you guys define loyalty? Obedience and uh, believing in the Messiah, following his Torah and wearing the tzitzit on your corners of your garment. Yeah, tzitzit. Show people that you are Yahs. Show people that you are uh, counted in the children of Yashrael. All the people of Yashrael, if you consider yourself a child of the Most High, we should be wearing tzitzit. Not just men, women too. Yeah, it's women. We're all it, children. It, it doesn't say, it didn't say men. And if you think that this was all about men and only about men and the women shouldn't be involved, I, I strongly disagree with that. And for those that that cling to Paul's writings that women should be quiet in the ecclesias and never say a word um, and, and keep their peace. I would strongly disagree with that as well. And I believe that Sister Carla was a wonderful, great example of that. And if nobody had spoken up, then Boss Clan would be still on the wrong path and we would still be calling on the name of our Messiah for defense incorrectly. And so I think it's very important that all of us have a way to speak and that we're nobody is shut up. Nobody needs, you know, everybody's valuable. Everybody has, you know, the right. And if we're walking in Torah, people should be listened to. People should definitely be listened to. So, all right. Um, anyone else have anything? Um, tonight is Youth for Yah. Youth for Yah. Yes, it's going to be live. Yes, for anybody that's out there, we're going to actually crank it up one more hour, right, guys? We're going to do this at 7. seven. Yeah, because it seems like we get more viewers at 7, and people will probably get off work better at that time, so everyone can join in. Right, so we're going to do it an hour later, so um, whatever time you guys were doing it uh, with us, if you were out it's there doing this. It's 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's 8 p.m. Eastern time, which would be 7 o'clock Central time, which would be 6 o'clock Mountain time, which would be, I don't five know what time it is. 5 o'clock Pacific time. Five, oh, 5 o'clock Pacific time. Okay, well, all right, so that's it. Um, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. We thank you guys very much for being part of our family. Much love to you guys out there. Huge bear hug, high fives, and we will see you guys one day in the Shalom, I hope. All right. Probably not the Shalom, probably the kingdom come. All right, goodbye, guys. Shalom. Shalom.